welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and my guest today is Jennifer Hashley. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Jennifer is the uh, executive director of New Entry, which is a sustainable farming project here in Beverly at uh, located at Moraine Farm. So the first thing that we're going to ask you for our viewers, uh, Jennifer, is if you could explain to uh, our viewers, what is a sustainable farming project? What are you all about? Great. Um, so our mission is to make sure that we have a future generation of skilled and trained farmers to grow food for us. And we want to do that in a sustainable way, both growing of the food, using organic practices, but also making sure that the farmers themselves are sustaining their interest in careers in agriculture and the land and, you know, nourishing the community. So we want to make sure that sustainability, which is a three-legged stool, both economic, environmental, and the social aspects of people that want to get into the business of farming will continue and, and fulfill all those those legs of the stool. Yeah. So so go on with that. Tell us about these three legs of the stool and, and, and what that means actually in practice and how, as you practice it here in, in uh, at New Entry. Sure. So one of the things that we do to get people interested in careers in agriculture is we need to help them understand that farming is a business first and foremost. So we do a lot of outreach in the community to um, engage people and help them recognize that farming is a career opportunity. Unfortunately, because right now in the, this country we have less than you know one or two percent of the American population involved in farming, people don't see a lot of farmers or they hear about farmers, but they might not know a farmer. Whereas you know a few generations ago, everybody knew a farmer. Somebody in their family was growing food somewhere. Um, and so as we've lost that, p kids growing up these days don't think of farming as a career opportunity. It's even been removed from, like, the classification of career opportunities list. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a, a tall order to um, encourage people to get into farming. You hear a lot of the news about, you know, it's really hard for farmers to make a living. They're struggling. So it's not a very attractive message that we're sending um, to, to bring people into the industry. So we need to make sure that the people who still have this deep-seated passion for farming understand that it is a business. It's also um, a lifestyle. It also involves a lot of unpredictability. So the business side is the economic side. The production side is also really helping folks understand how do we grow food in New England. We have a very short growing season. Right. We have, you know, rocky soils. Um, you know. yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit about the courses that, that, you, mm -hmm. that you do offer here in just a minute. But we, we seem to have um, come full circle, Jennifer, that mm -hmm. it used to be where most, most of our population lived rurally in small farming communities. And then, then we had the big mega, mega farms. And now the concept is to come and bring it back into where it was locally produced food, mm -hmm. uh, locally consumed food. So that, that's kind of, you're, you're fitting in with that model now, are you not? Absolutely, yeah. So when we think about um, sustainability and um, food security for our, you know, for our health and our well-being, we obviously need to eat to survive as a species. Um, we have to think about where that food is coming from. And as we've, you know, our policies and, and practices over the years have allowed farming to become much more industrialized and monopolized and um, consolidated in the industry. So family farmers have unfortunately not been able to compete with those you know, much right. larger Group. Yeah. So there's a lot of land in New England that is still has been farmed or that, you know, once was a farm that is, you know, looking for people to steward the land. And so our vision really is to help train folks to be good land stewards, good business people to grow food sustainably to feed our local communities as a form of food security, but as a, also as a form of community building. So, right. yeah. yeah. And you're, you're located, as, as we mentioned earlier, uh, on the Moraine Farm uh, property, which is here in Beverly, right on Route 97. And they, they have several, uh, the, the Project is Venture is on that property, so mm -hmm. is the Waldorf School. Mm -hmm. And you have a portion, tell us about how much of that, and I think we have a couple of aerial shots that we're going to show uh, mm -hmm. of our audience. So how much of that area do you, and where are you located relative to Route 97? Right. So our entrance to the property is right off Route 97 at the um, more northern edge of, of the property, um, closer to the Phillips Reserve, the state reserve there. Right. Um, and so we have about 15 acres of um, cultivated land that's in deer fence, which is really helpful being surrounded <laughs> by the woods. Um, and so we have a long-term lease, a 10-year lease with the trustees of reservations. So they are a part owner of that property. Um, we also have a license agreement for some of the land through with Project Adventure through the trustees. Um, so we are, we have access to the infrastructure at the site, the fencing, the greenhouses, 
houses, irrigation. Um, there's barn facilities there so we can um, aggregate and right. distribute food. We brought our coolers with us and our equipment. <laughs> um, so it's a working farm, which yeah. is great. Now, you're, you're not new at this. You, you were pro- uh, the new entry has been around for, tell us how long it's been around, for yeah. about 20 years or so? 20 years. So yeah. this is our 21st year. Um, yeah. We started in 1998. Yeah. Um, our original um, target audience for the program were immigrants and refugees who had um, farming backgrounds because 20-plus right. you know, years ago, the local interest in local food and people interested in getting into farming was didn't, not didn't what exist. it is today. Yeah. Um, and so folks were coming to this country who really had strong cultural connections to the food that they grew up with and wanted to be able to grow those crops here in New England um, and also just had a calling. They wanted their children to know and, and maintain that connection to their agricultural roots. So we established the program. Um, we're based at Tufts University in the Friedman School of Nutrition Science and Policy and adjunct faculty member um, launched the program. Uh, our former commissioner of agriculture, Gus Schumacher, who is unfortunately um, now deceased, but he was also, you know, thinking about where where is the future, where are the future farmers? Who's going to be growing our food? Yeah. And it's like, when I retire, I want to make sure that, you know, there are people here in Massachusetts, because he was a farmer at one point, yeah. want to be growing our food. So they kind of hatched this, this idea that we have folks here with agricultural backgrounds that want to farm. We, we just need to make sure that they have access to land and resources and training to grow their crops here. And that's right. really how it started. Um, and we were had to learn a lot about what kind of um, tropical crops would grow in Massachusetts during the growing season. We worked with a lot of Cambodian farmers from the Lowell area. That was where we um, first established the program. Captain um, John Oganowski, who is the pilot of the September 11th terrorist attacks, the oh, American okay. Airlines pilot, yeah. um, his property was one of the first sites that we operated on in the Dracut area right outside of Lowell. Wow. Um, so we invited um, you know, a lot of the Cambodian farmers in that community who had agricultural backgrounds. We worked with a lot of the Hmong farmers. More African immigrants started coming into the Lowell area. So yeah. that was mainly our audience for a while. And then in around 2007, when the local food movement was really ramping up, um, there were a lot of other folks that were kind of knocking on our door, being yeah. like, you know, as farmers markets are blossoming and community supported agriculture programs are launching, uh, really wanted the opportunity to take advantage of the training and the resources that we had to offer. So we opened up the program to anyone who and wanted gonna, to farm. We're going to talk a little bit later, but there's some interesting little stories about some of the people that have become mm-hmm. farmers at your location. Mm-hmm. So so you've been you've been here at Moraine only since about March, so mm-hmm. that's why people may be in our local community here. Uh, now, were you? did you have the whole location? Uh, you were in Lawrence, you said? Uh, in Lowell. Lowell. Yep. So okay. we were um, operating on a scattered site model. That's what I call it. So our office location was in downtown Lowell, um, and then we had our farm sites were in Drake it, and we had multiple yeah. farm sites. So we had yeah. three to four different sites over the years um, where we had to put in the infrastructure, the electricity, the irrigation, the greenhouses, the storage sheds, and all right. that. We were driving around, you know, in the suburban community from one five-acre parcel to another five-acre parcel trying to cobble together enough land. And when we developed our food hub, um, we were on one of the farms in Drake it, and then we kind of outgrew the space there as we were growing. And so we ended up leasing a warehouse space in Lowell. So we had like four or five different sites that we were trying to manage. And it was challenging to provide the kind of comprehensive programming that we wanted to, where farmers could, you know, they didn't have to drive across town for half an hour in traffic getting across the bridge to drop off their food at the food hub yeah. or then, you know, drive and park and walk up, you know, the four foot flights of stairs to our office to get support with their crop plan if we weren't out in the field. And we never knew when they were going to show up in the fields because so many of them have other jobs and kind of come before and after work or on the weekends. So it was just hard to provide the kind of comprehensive services that we wanted to. Yeah. And so I'd been looking for probably about 15 years for a central <laughs> operation. <laughs> and we finally found it as like a dream come true. It's just really hard to find land close to Boston to have the acreage that we needed with all the infrastructure ready made. I mean, you can look at a lot of farm properties and they're either million dollars to buy and then you got to invest a million yeah, dollars in yeah. infrastructure to get them up and running. And and Moraine Farm, you know, the trustees had operated a, a CSA program there many years ago. Yep. So they had done all the investment already in the fencing and irrigation and greenhouses. Right. So it was pretty much moving ready for us, yeah. um, which was a wonderful so, opportunity. Uh, unless our, our audience, if they don't know, the, the Marine Farm now is primarily owned by 
the trustees of reservations who have mm -hmm. a, a lot of, you know, 100 or so properties all, all throughout the, yeah. the state. Now, you mentioned uh, an affiliation with Tufts, and on, on mm -hmm. your business card, it, 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 you have a Tufts business card. Explain mm -hmm. the affiliation of, of New Entry with, with Tufts. Yep. So we are a program of the Friedman School of Nutrition, Science, and Policy, and they have a graduate degree. It's a graduate school of nutrition, one of the only graduate schools of nutrition in the country. And within that, they have subspecialties, and we're part of the Agriculture, Food, and Environment program. So if we're thinking about nutrition and, you know, it's not all about molecules and, you know, eat some of this or some of that, but it's also really about, you know, a more comprehensive approach to nutrition. And, yeah. and the school is really um, both working on policy, research, science, but also public impact. And so we're, yeah. New Entry is a great example of a public impact program where, you know, we're, we're using best practices, we're leveraging the research capacity of the university and training beginning yeah. farmers and yeah. Now, how, how are you financially supported? Do the farmers have to pay you, like, to work the land, or do you do, you, do, do grants, or does Tufts give you money, or how, how does that work? We are a self-funded program, so we, we don't receive funding from the university, but um, we do support ourselves through grants, um, individual contributions, um, fee-for-service, earned income, kind of a, a try to be a very sustainable mm -hmm. ourselves approach to funding. Um, but yeah, we do also receive a lot, a fair amount of USDA federal grants that are geared toward um, risk management training for farmers or beginning farmer and rancher training, food safety training. So we kind of leverage some of those those programs. But um, farmers do pay a fee. So they take, you know, pay a course registration fee to take our classes and workshops. Okay. And then there's a small rental fee um, for the leasing the land or, you know, the program fee for using the land. And then there are some, you know, a la carte fees, I would say, for the different equipment use and cooler use and greenhouse use and things like that. But we try to make it, it's very subsidized. We do, you know, the true cost of what it costs us to put on the program for a farmer um, is definitely not what yeah, they're, they're not cover, paying. They're not covering yeah. the whole cost, but yeah. we want to make it accessible to people to be able to, to access um, and okay. be able to start up their business in the first few years when it's really challenging with all the startup costs. All right. And you are a CSA community supported agriculture. Mm -hmm. So you so tell us about the CSA program uh, there at New mm -hmm. Entry. Yeah, so we have th three main programs at New Entry. One is the farmer training, one is the food hub, and then we have some national programs as well. And, and the food hub really integrates well with the farmer training because a food hub is really, you think about a hub and a wheel and, and spokes. And so the, the food hub is our, our warehouse. Um, we have coolers and a space where we aggregate the, f the food. So our incubator farmers on site bring food into the hub. We also purchase food from our alumni in the region who've gone off and oh, left okay. the incubator, okay. who've graduated. They're now farming. Now they're farming. There are success <laughs> stories. Uh, so they're still potentially part of the food hub. And then if, we, you know, many of our beginning farmers don't grow tree fruit, so we also support other local farmers in the area by purchasing other crops. And so all that food kind of comes into the hub. We run a community-supported agriculture program, so we sell shares and subscriptions. So you right. receive a weekly box for tw up, you know 10 weeks or 20 weeks throughout the season of whatever's in season. Um, and then we distribute that out to various locations. So we mm -hmm. have, you know, drop-off points throughout the greater Boston area, here in Beverly at the Waldorf School on Friday at the Farmer's Markets. Okay. People can sign up for um, the CSA shares there. Um, we're signing up for fall shares right now. So if people want 10 weeks this fall, they can sign up and pick up at the Waldorf School on Friday okay. afternoons. And we'll, at the end of the show, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll give uh, our audience uh, information on how they can how they can sign up for that. So the the CSA, so people can go on site to the hub there to buy the food, uh, or or you have a truck, you have a van yep. uh, that we saw out there there where you where you have these drop off uh, yep. points. And and how how often do you drop food off? Once, twice a week? Three times a week. Yep. Three so times we go a week. out. Um, so most a lot of the food comes in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So it's fresh picked, and then we pack it. We have volunteers who come in and help us pack the shares. And then it goes back out on the truck to the different drop-off points um, throughout the area where people pick up their, their green box of, filled with fresh harvested produce that they take. We provide a newsletter that has recipes, cooking tips, um, yeah. storage instructions, stories about the farmers that have grown the food. I, I can see, once once my wife sees this program, I think I'll be seeing a lot of her <laughs> right. over there. And now, part of that, too, I just want to mention, um, is a food access program. So there are folks that can afford a CSA share and there are also for folks that for whom that may be a challenge financially to buy fresh organic fruits and vegetables. So we also partner with um, various organizations to do 
food access. We have a, right. a strong partnership with Leahy, um, Leahy Health, who sponsors free senior <clears throat> farmers markets, um, and they're some of their clinics. Yeah. So we distribute fresh fruits and vegetables to those clinics, and seniors can come and, and pick up free produce. Um, we also work with other food pantries and homeless shelters and, um, and different partnerships that make sure that the food that we grow, this fresh, healthy, locally grown food, is yeah. available to everyone. And it's certified organic. I want to make mm-hmm. sure. And yeah. so is it, is it very difficult to, to keep things uh, on a farm like that so that you can maintain your organic uh, uh, classification? What, what, what specific things do you have to do? Yeah, so, I mean, we really value and espouse principles of regenerative agriculture and organic agriculture, sustainable agriculture, call it what you will. Yeah. Uh, we, we understand as, as farmers and stewards of the land that soil health is the most important aspect of, of growing healthy food for ourselves. And mm-hmm. so we have to really take care of the soil. And if you have good, healthy soil, you will have good, healthy plants, um, all kinds of plants, which include weeds and then pests and all kinds of other things, um, and then the environment as well. But uh, for organic certification, you have to make sure that you're sourcing, that you have a good soil health management plan and a nutrient management plan, that you're rotating your crops, you're building um, soil fertility through cover cropping or minimum tillage strategies, lots of things like that. But you're not allowed to use any synthetic pesticides, mm-hmm. fertilizers, Okay. Any, any, you know, things like that that could contaminate um, the produce. So we right. have to source our seeds from certified organic farmers oh, who are okay. growing the seeds. Um, we have to manage the pests with, um, you know, approved products. You can still use sprays and things like that, but they can't contain be, any synthetics. Right. And we have to really manage the soil fertility well. And it also means we can't spray herbicide on the weeds. So it's much more labor intensive to be <laughs> pulling by hand, pulling hoeing, you know, bending over. <laughs> weeds, um, yeah. So it's definitely um, an investment of both, yeah. you know, understanding and management and care and knowledge of how to how to work in, in a natural yeah. system like that. And then you just have more limited tools yeah. um, than, than conventional farmers may. Well, let, me, let me ask you expand the audience, you, you have a, a, a list of courses that you offer uh, mm-hmm. uh, your farmers. Everything's from very, very simple things like, you know, how to put the seed in the ground, how to watering it, all the way up to kind of the the financial aspect of, of managing a farm and, and the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the balance sheet of how to make a profit from, from being a farmer. So tell us a little bit about those courses that you offer. Yeah, so we have a, a regular course that we try to offer every other month or so called Explore Farming. Yeah. And that's really to help people get a better understanding of the food system and what does it mean to be a commercial farmer in today's day and age and and what are all the different aspects of the food system that you'll be involved in as a potential farmer. And it helps people also do a self-assessment of their skills and knowledge and time commitment and understanding of, of what that means and then what our program can offer. So that's kind of our introductory explore I've been kind of thinking about this crazy idea. I want to be a farmer. Is this right for me? So we ask people to kind of sign up for that to learn more. And then if they um, really have a lot of good production experience, they've worked on a farm, maybe they grew up on a farm, they've a heavy gardener, grown food before, they might want to just jump right into our farm business planning course. If they don't have a lot of that background, we encourage people to take our crop production course, which is a 20-week, every other week, hands-on training part online so you get a lot of videos and information you can do that at your own pace and then a hands-on on the farm for a few hours on a sunday afternoon we have a half acre demonstration plot organically managed demonstration plot people can come and get you know skills from seeding in the greenhouse to transplanting look at all the different scales of you know hand powered equipment to tractor mounted equipment you know, with a hoe and seeing what like a half acre demonstration plot really right. looks like. Like if you're going to have a business, this is what it this looks is, yeah, like. Yeah. And here's how you do it. So they get that whole season experience with hands on training um, on the farm and then the supplemental learning. Yeah. And then once they're ready, we ask them to take our business planning course. And that's really kind of the requirement to get access to the incubator farm and the food hub. So they take a business planning course. It's an eight week course, meets in person at our office. And we really walk through the fundamentals of developing a business plan. So, you know, your startup financials, the marketing, like who are you going to sell this stuff to? What's your marketing plan? What's your crop production plan? How are you going to, um, you know, sell yourself to, to customers and then how are you going to pay for it? And then, you know, what's your profit margin look like? Do you need capital or loans? You know, things like that. 
Angela. Now, uh, the, the original model that you said where you were looking at immigrants that may have come from farming communities and you were trying to transition them, they come to the United States and okay, learn how to farm mm -hmm. uh, because of our shorter, you know, shorter growing season and so forth. Now, it, it, it's a little bit different. The, the people you have on the farms, some of them may have come from that background, but we, we have a couple of, of, of uh, interesting little bios here that I, mm -hmm. I would like you to share with our sure. audience. Th there's one farmer that we met when we were out there. His name is Mark Rudkowski. And mm -hmm. I know that he has another life, a career as, as a landscaper, mm -hmm. but he's also, I think this is his first or second year doing the farming. T mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about Mark. Yeah, so this is his first year farming, and, and he's really excited to kind of, you know, transition his love of, you know, working outside in the land and, you know, grow, you know dealing with different kind of plants to growing food and figuring out how he can serve his, you know, local community and, and grow food and make a business with farming. and. Yeah, and it's a great skill to have to come from a landscaping background, yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know, he's already understands and the, <laughs> the lifestyle of working outside and all kinds of weather. How to, yeah, how to deal with, you know, yeah. plants in unwanted places and, you know, coax things that you want to see out of the ground and, and that. So that's a great skill to have. But not all of our farmers come from, you know, outdoor landscaping jobs. Many are career changers from other well, occupations. Well, I want you to talk about there's a, a fellow named Muhammad mm -hmm. who is a, is a researcher, medical researcher at Harvard. And so he wants to go from being that to being a farmer. Usually it's, it's the other way around. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about his story, yeah. uh, Jennifer. So, um, so Mahamad came to us a, a couple of years ago. He was actually um, became friends with one of our other incubator farmers in Drake and worked with her, a woman named Renee, for a year or so in our Drake farms and then signed up for the class and wanted to become his own farmer. So last year was his first year in Drake managing his own plot. And so he's originally from Bangladesh. And so he really um, enjoys growing a lot of the, the crops that are native to his country. So he grows things like Lufa gourd and does a lot of tomatoes and peppers and, and other kinds of specialty cucumbers and eggplants and some herbs and things that are native to his community. And so um, this is his second year here in Beverly. Um, he learned a lot from his first year last year in Drake to this year. So early in the season, he definitely planned his weed control strategy. So he used some black plastic mulch and then um, put different row cover in between each of his plants. And he's got a beautiful plot of tomatoes and peppers and things. But, um, you know, it's really important to him to make sure that his community in the Boston area, he's from Cambridge, lives in Cambridge, drives up to Beverly every day yeah. to farm, has access to the kind of food that he wants to eat and that his family grew up eating. Um, Incredible. So, and you yeah. have a, a fellow named Nick that's from, from Beverly. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Nick. Yeah, so so Nick is um, really into food. So he also um, has been a baker and a cook and or chef and, you know, worked in restaurant industry and, and has a vision of creating a, a farm-to-table restaurant at some point. And so he's, like, trying to learn the other side of, of the production. He's worked with a lot of food on, on the back end, but looking to really get his hands in the dirt and, and figure out how to grow the food and, you know, figure out all the yeah. nuances of, of what's going on in the field and how that might impact flavor and and uh, taste on the other end. Yeah, and now uh, we were we were this morning with the chamber. We we got to visit uh, kind of a, a sneak preview of the new Whole Foods market here that's mm -hmm. at the North uh, Shore Crossing that uh, right here in Beverly. And they told us that they were going to be sourcing a, a lot of their vegetables and, and things from local local farmers. Mm -hmm. I think you were mentioning to me earlier that mm -hmm. that you were you were having some discussions with them uh, yeah. them as well. Uh, now, what what sort of a, a commitment, or what, what is your what is the the quid pro quo of somebody that wants to come to you and say I want to do this? What do you expect from them? What do they expect from you? And kind of what's what's the what's the mutual agreement with with your farmers? Yeah, so so basically, we're a training and education program. So our commitment to the farmers is to provide the training, the education, the technical assistance, you know, that one-on-one -on -one kind of mentoring and coaching as they're starting up their business. And so, you know, by having access to this amazing resource on our incubator farm, they have access to all the infrastructure, the startup costs are right there for them. You know, they're not having to buy a tractor or to, you know, spend a lot of money on an irrigation and fencing and greenhouses and coolers. It's all right there for them to start at a low cost. The commitment that they need to make to us is to demonstrate that they're really serious about um, taking this, you know, this investment of education and training in this platform and really giving it their best shot. Um, that's why we ask people to go through the business planning course so that we understand they know what they're going into. They are, they're coming at it with their eyes wide open. They've done their homework. They've made their plan. They've demonstrated their commitment to thinking through what it's going to take and that they show up every day and do the work that it takes to, to best utilize and maintain and manage their plot and provide food to the community. I mean, that's also 
the commitment yeah. is that you know we want to make sure that this food is is accessible sure. um, to everyone. So sure. Now you you uh, you mentioned your alumni, if you will, earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about some of the things that some people who have come through your incubator, if I can call it that, mm -hmm. and what they're doing now? Sure. So we also, just to be clear, to the incubators for a three-year period of time at this stage. So okay. people have three seasons to really try out the business of farming. And so then once they kind of fledge the nest or you know leave yeah. the incubator, um, we hope that they go on to continue to farm. And many of our graduates have gone on and started their own farms in other locations where they've been able to find land. So we also do some land matching and mixing um, and help folks you know connect to land trusts or Land for Good as a partner organization of ours that helps folks. Um, they have a New England farmland finder on the website where landowners can list their properties and farm seekers can okay. go and, and try to make a match. Yeah. And so we provide support to help our farmers access other farm locations. And then we've had farmers purchase farms. One of our um, graduates a few years ago purchased a 92-acre um, oh. property in Dudley. So he's growing on about five acres of that this year. He started slowly, um, but he's you know slowly working that out and is leasing some of the other land to a local beef farm. Um, and then other farmers are, are leasing land or, um, you know, renting land near where they live. Um, so they don't have a, a long commute to, <laughs> to us. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, some people are leasing land trust land or private landowner land. If folks have extra land um, that they want to make available that might be conducive to growing, you know, vegetables and things like that, um, have water and it's relatively flat and hopefully stone free, which is a, a tall order. <laughs> especially um, in New England. Especially in New England. Yeah. It's, it's nice to try to connect folks to those opportunities. And if the landowner has more than five acres and it's agricultural, um, some people may be enrolled in um, Chapter 61A, which is the tax use status, and get a tax break. So they might be looking for a farmer to maintain their tax status to, oh, um, okay. to get a discount on their property taxes. So we're always trying to connect people to those yeah. opportunities um, where landowners benefit by making their land available to a farmer and farmers and they, that they get the benefit need of, land um, can get that access to that affordably. Yeah, yeah. Now, have you had, I don't, I don't want to, uh, have you have you had people that want to come into this and then somehow they go, oh, well, this is more work than I thought and they kind of give it up. Absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's one of our, it's not, I don't want to say it's our goal. Our goal is to help create a new generation of farmers and help have bit successful business folks. But, you know, our whole model is designed to have people, you know, explore the enterprise, be prepared, you know, get get started and it, and realize that if it's not going to work out for them, it's better to find out on our incubator farm and sure. do it for a season or two and then throw in the towel yeah, than to go out and buy a farm buy or a buy a tractor <laughs> or do whatever else and then decide, oh, I hate this. Or, you know, yeah. God forbid, you know, you have a falling out with your spouse because you pursued some crazy yeah. dream and yeah. put your family I'm in financial risk. Risk, I'm going you back know. to New York. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So we want to, you know, we also end up, we realize, too, that we're creating other careers in the food system. So yeah. people who come and maybe farming isn't ultimately right for them, but then they get turned on to food distribution or food access work or some other kind of food systems um, you know, yeah. or nonprofit work in general, whatever it may be, um, we're creating other career pathways through exposure right. to the food system. Now, we, we promised our viewers earlier, um, one is if, if they're interested in the com uh, community supported agriculture, the CSA component, mm -hmm. is there a number or, or a website or something? How can they how can they get more information on that? Yeah, so they can um, you can come to our our website um, at www.nesfp.org. Okay, we'll um, see that on the screen. Great, and then um, if you click on the Food Hub link, um, which is in the middle of our homepage, uh, it'll tell you how to register for the CSA program um, as well. And there's you know. It, the, we're already in the season, so um, people can sign up on a prorated basis at any time, sure. or they can also just sign up for the 10-week fall share, uh, which will be starting in the next yeah. few weeks. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, Jennifer, thank you very much. It's been a very interesting yeah. conversation. Yeah. So my thank guest you. today has been Jennifer Hashley, who uh, runs the New mm -hmm. Entry Operation Sustainable Farming mm -hmm. Project mm -hmm. uh, at Moraine Farm here in Beverly. And I'd like to remind our viewers, you have been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.